Google's anti-gravity completely changes how we build AI automation. Until now, building this system meant stitching together tools, logic, and integrations by hand. Now, there is a new way to do it where you describe what you want, and the system turns it into a real working AI workflow without having to live in the technical details. In this video, I'll show you how anti-gravity does that and why this is a big shift for anyone selling AI services. And if you're new here, my name is Joe. I'm an ex-senior manager in big tech and over the last five months, I've helped dozens of businesses transition to AI. So with that aside, get comfortable and let's dive straight in. The question we're trying to answer with this video is basically, will NA10 and drag and drop platforms disappear? But the reality is no one really knows as of now. However, we all have an opinion. And in this video, I want to give you all of the necessary information that you need to have in order to decide if NA10 will stay or not in the future. What is NA10? To make it very simple, NA10 is a drag and drop platform. And what does it mean? It means that whenever you are trying to build something or to build an automation, you are trying to build sort of a Lego. So you are dragging a block and then you drag the next one and you need to make a sort of construction. The construction, once it's finished, it's going to be the AI automation that you are trying to sell to your customer. And what is anti-gravity? Anti-gravity is an IDE, which means an integrated development environment. And you can think about it without going into the nitty gritty details as a kitchen. Inside the kitchen, you have your raw ingredients, you have your tools, and also you have a place to cook. And at the same way that you have this for a kitchen, in the IDE, you have your code, you have your files, and then you have also a place where you can shape a real product, right? Which is your software. So NA10 builds automation, Anti-gravity builds software and what we call agentic workflow. And what is the difference? Here I wrote down the major differences, then you can stop the screen and go check them if you want. I just want to highlight a couple that are very relevant. The first one is that, as mentioned, anti-gravity is a place where you create software, while NA10 is a place where you connect softwares. Inside anti-gravity, you can build anything, literally. You can build apps, and I have a couple of videos that I did. You can build agents, you can build agentic workflow, and so on and so forth. Inside NA10, you can only build workflows. So these are the main two things that I would love you to understand, because now, to answer, will NA10 disappear? We're just going to build something, and we're going to build the same thing, both in anti-gravity and NA10, because I want you to see what is the difference in terms of process and simplicity when we talk about building an agentic workflow versus an AI automation, and I want you to draw your own conclusions. Just as an FYI and as a spoiler, for my community, I am already moving towards agentic workflow because what I believe is that eventually these will take over. But very curious to see what you think. Let's go straight to the building stuff. Great. So now we're going to build the same AI system. We're going to build an agentic workflow and an AI automation. And both of them will use Apify and will store the leads inside a Google Sheet. So with that being said, let's go straight and start with anti-gravity. All right, we're in anti-gravity. I explained in a couple of videos how you can navigate the interface. So now I will go straight into building mode. The first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to create a folder. So we're gonna press it right here, create a new folder. We're gonna call it uh, trial anti-gravity versus NA10. And we're gonna create, right? So this is now our folder. We're going to open it. Now that we are here, since we're building agentic workflow, the first thing that we want to do is to import a file, which we'll call agents.md, so a markdown file, that will contain all of the instruction of our agentic workflow in order to ensure that the workflow that we're building actually does what we want and does the so-called self-healing process, meaning that whenever the agent does a mistake, it will understand it and it will improve each site. And in order to find it, you can simply go inside my community into the classroom section and here inside the tutorials, and then you will be able to find the file inside here. I will also leave it for free down below. And you can copy this file right here, go back to anti-gravity, and then you're going to be able to create a file called, I don't know, agents.md because it's going to be a markdown and you can paste it right away. So you go back, you copy and you paste it right away. So this file is not mine. I found it in a Reddit uh, post. However, I also think this file belongs to Nick. So shout out to Nick in case that's yours. I think he made two great tutorials on Agentic Workflow, by the way. So shout out to that. So what are the information inside here? Other than the general instruction that I'm not going to read all of them, 
But basically, the prompt structures the AI agent with a framework, which is the DOE framework, right? And now I'm going to show you that it's also already inside the file. And basically, this framework is divided into three layers, where the first is the D, so directive, and it tells the um, agent what it should be doing, right? So everything in here should be written in Markdown, so in natural language, and should be stored in directives. The second layer is the O, or orchestration. So basically this is, imagine a manager within the company that decides where the various tasks are going to which of the employee. And then the execution part are the actual employee, sorry, that are doing the work. So imagine these as all of the tools right here and all of the things that the AI agent can use in order to execute the task. Mind you, in this part here, we're not telling the AI agent to execute, but we are giving the AI agent the ability to choose which of the tools to use in order to execute. And always staying at top level, here we have the so-called self-anneal, which basically means that whenever things break, we are telling the agent how it should be fixing these things on its own, right? Ask the user if something is paid for permission, and if it's not, just fix it. And this is a big difference with AI automation because AI automation just bugs and then you have to sort it out and you have to fix it and etc. Here we have the so-called self-annealing loops, which basically means that the agent is able to auto-improve and auto-fix the bugs that finds along the way. Cool. So now here is a bit of structure and we have concluded the initial part. So what we're going to do now is that we gave the agent all of the instruction and how to proceed. Now we just need to give the AI agent the prompt in order to understand what is the actual product that we need to be producing, right? So I will just quickly write the prompt and come back here. Okay, so this is the prompt that I'm going to be using. And basically it is build an agentic workflow that does the following things. So first of all, scrape leads from Apify. And here I said, use Apify scraper, scraper ID. And here I left the placeholder. I'm now going to fill it with you. And then Apify, uh, API keys. And here I left the placeholder. Run the scraper and extract all of the leads and record returned by it. And then the second step is to store them in an Excel file. So what we described in the beginning. And here I, I just gave the path, right? So it's already created inside my Google Drive, and I just have to give the path for anti-gravity to be able to access it. So what we're going to be doing now is to go inside Apify. So we're going to go here, and right here, we can immediately see what is the ID of this scraper. So it's Code Crafter uh, Lead Finder. So here, I'm going to immediately replace this with the scraper ID. And in order to find the API keys, you have to go to Settings, then API and Integration, then here you can do something like this. So uh, agentic workflow, test, anti-gravity, create, and then you can copy and you will paste them right here. And the last thing that we have to do is actually to paste the Google Sheet path. So what we're going to have to do is go back here, copy their URL, and then I am going to provide it right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to keep it on the planning mode because this way we can have an SOP before starting and we can review it, and then we can press enter. What we're gonna do now is simply wait and see what is the output that uh, anti-gravity will give us. And ideally, this will be enough with one or two interaction in order to already produce the scraper. And the only thing that we will have to do is simply to sort the little bugs or the little input that will be required along the way. It may be that we have to provide some more details or we have to download some other like packages because maybe they are not installed on our laptop. But other than that, this is the complexity that anti-gravity requires in order to start creating agentic workflow. So if this is the complexity, the technical barriers of building things, it's going down very, very much. So what is the skill set that we will need in the future in order to be successful? In order to be successful agency owner, which is what I teach in my community, will have a lot to do with the human side of things. So how are we going to be able to find the customers? How are we going to be able to sell them something? How can we help them decide if the solution that we're actually providing adds value or not to their business? What is the business impact? So all of those skills will be more and more prominent 
and the entry barrier in order to start an AI agency, which is nothing more than a service business, will decrease more and more. So the best agency owners in the future will be those who are able to generate leads and sell to those leads. Great. Now the agent did our implementation plan. So we have everything that we want, right? So right here, we gave a look. It's perfect. It found the actor. All we need to do now is press proceed and see what happens right after. All right, so it ran. And what it told me is that before proceeding, I need to integrate my Google Sheets with Antigravity. And in order to do that, there is this guide, which is the Google Sheet setup.md, which is what Antigravity produced for me. And it gave me a step-by-step -step guide. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do the step-by-step -step process and then come back to the video once the process is completed. Fantastic, now I have completed all these steps. And if you can see right here, I also produced the service account.json, which is this one. And I also gave all of the access keys and everything that you need to proceed. So now here, I will simply type Okay, proceed, and then we proceed to the next step. Fantastic, now then the agent finished running, everything seems to be proceeding as per expectation, and just to be clear, fantastic, now the agent finished running. So now let me quickly move myself so you can see, and right here I'm gonna paste the little prompt, so scrape me, then 10 CEOs from the UK of companies between 51 and 100 employees and send me the link of the Google Sheet once done. Now I'm gonna run this. And now the agent, as you can see, is running. So what we can do is we can go to Apify and ideally here in a while, we should be seeing that the actor that we were looking for is running and it's been triggered directly from Antigravity. And now our agent ran. So here we can see that the 10 results are now successful. And if we now go back to anti-gravity right here, um, anti-gravity is also generating the link of the Google Sheet that we stored our leads on. All right, and if we open the Google Sheet, we can find actually the 10 uh, CEOs and the data that we request. So this is the complexity that it takes in order for you to be able to create an agentic workflow. And as you can see, we don't really need to understand how things work behind the scene, right? Or under the hood. We just need to have an overall understanding of, okay, what is the thing that we are trying to solve? What is the business need that we're trying to solve? What is the solution that might solve this business need? In our case, it was simply a, a lead generation uh, scraper, right? So we just input whoever we want to find, like CEOs and et cetera, and we want the details. So we're just scraping leads, right? Nothing crazy. However, this can become way more complex. And the only thing that you will actually have to do is to prompt it in natural language. So once again, the technical barrier is now is very low. And one thing which is very different inside NA10 is that we also don't need to understand a lot the logic that is behind it on, on how these scrapers are actually built. While if we were to uh, now build the same thing with a drag and draw platform, we would need to know what it does, we would need to know in what sequence we have to build them, and we would need also to go a little bit deeper because we may need to do some API connections and to connect them to our drag and drop platforms. Because the only thing that we did right here was simply to take those credentials, let's call them like this, or those keys, and paste them inside the chat box, just like we were prompted. And therefore, we were able also to follow a step-by-step -step approach that we don't necessarily have with drag and drop platforms. Let's now go to NA10 and real quick build the same type of scraper. Okay, so since this is not an NA10 course, I will be very quick right here, but just for you to see the difference, right? So here we would start with probably a manual trigger. We would get then go with an AP5 node, right? So we would go right here and we would run an actor and get a database. The other thing that we would need to do is to create new credentials and therefore we would need to connect with Apify. So we would need the API keys. So just like we did before, we would go to Apify, settings, API and integration. I'm now going to take the same credentials just because we just produced them. So we would create new token and etc. Back to NA10, we would paste it. We would call it uh, Apify Scraper, Scraper Leads. We would save it. Now here it would be connected. Now what we would need to do is we would actually select the scraper. So instead of getting crazy, we would just go here because this is one of the latest scraper that we ran. We would go inside our API again in actors. 
we would go inside the lead funder, which was the last successful run. We would put our filters right here. So United Kingdom and all of that stuff. And we would press start so that it could run. Right here, it's easier because we can simply go right here. We can take all of this code, go back to NA10, and we could simply go here and paste it, right? So right here, the only thing that we did is we decided to paste everything in here. So this is a string, but in our case, it's not. Anyway, it works. And what we would do right now is that we would ensure that this scraper actually can run. So we would run a test. And as you can see, by the way, uh, things that I didn't put a lot of attention in the beginning is we block the things to 10, just like we did before. So cool, we got 10 results. So as you can see right here, we got the 10 results. And what we would need to do right now, it's actually add a sheet node that we have to pre-populate. So we would append row in sheet. And then right here, we would start from list and we could actually go in NA10 leads, which is actually uh, right here. So you can see that NA10 leads for now, it's not populated. And from list, it's going to be sheet one because that's the uh, basically the sheet. Now we need to create those columns. So we would need to say last name, email, personal email, and etc. So let me just make a quick trial. So I will call it last name. I would call it, oh, I would call it last name. I would call this email. I would call this phone number. And I don't know, probably also the LinkedIn. So without even complicating the things too much, um, we're just going to add the name of the columns. Now, all of a sudden we found them and then put the last name, put the email, put the phone number in this case, and put the LinkedIn address. Now, what we would do is that for every element in that list, we would call the execute step. And then ideally, if everything works properly, we would have the list of our CEOs. So this is to say, now, of course, we this is not dynamic as it was anti-gravity. So anti-gravity already, we can say, I don't know, find me the uh, marketing manager is, I don't know. But here uh, you are fully aware that this is not dynamic because here we would need to have an input form that would support in having dynamic variables inside the workflow. So this is to say, just because this workflow was very simple, it took like three seconds and it's still not completed, by the way. But the, the difference between this and anti-gravity is that anti-gravity has a very low technical barrier. Here, we actually kind of need to know what we're doing, right? We need to know the sequence. We need to know how to build it effectively. We need to know how to make an API connection, just like before, and many other things, right? So also here, by the way, we didn't connect it to the Google Sheet, but we will have to go through the same process, right? So this is to say the difference between the two platform is that in one, you're simply communicating in natural language. In the other one, you're dragging and dropping pre-made modules, or um, you can also go with custom module eventually. But you need to know what you're doing because there is a sequence and there is a structure, just like the example of the Lego before. With that being said, if you're interested in learning how to sell these things to real businesses, I would highly recommend you to join my community down below.